So I'm out tonight and I am doing some fox control. Um, I've been here a couple of times already and I've cleaned up a lot of foxes but I didn't film it. Um, I was more um, thinking that uh, I should concentrate on my job. But uh, tonight seems to be a bit quiet so I thought I've got some time I can film some of it. Anyway, long story short, there's um, lots of livestock around and some small acreage. There's a highway on one border and a forest on another. Um, there is some houses nearby, so I have to be reasonably quiet. But anyway, let's see if we can get some foxes. This is just a general look around what, what I'm dealing with. So there's a lot of um, a lot of livestock. But um, with subsonic ammo 22, we've got some good area at the back there, that's safe backdrop. So um, quiet and short range stuff. You know. Well, so far, so far, it's been super quiet. I haven't even seen a single fox. Um, it's probably getting close, it's about half past ten. So I've got a couple more hours to go, yeah, at least. Um, but I'm just sitting here scanning with the thermal, with a little infrared. Putting it down onto uh, my tablet there. And um, just keeping an eye on everything that way. Anyway, I'll get some updates to you if we do get any. <laughs> the thermal show, shows up all the rats. A little rat party going on over there. Chuck a little bit. All right, it's 2 a.m. and I haven't seen a single fox. Battery's gone flat in my tablet, so um, I think I'm going to call it quits uh, for tonight. Anyway, I'll come back tomorrow night, so I won't end the video here. Um, the clips you would have just seen while I was having a shot, I did see on the uh, night vision. I did see. I did actually film some from the other night, so that's what you were watching there tonight. Um, I put on some of the clips from the uh, from the other night. So, uh, apparently I've been hitting here at about 2, 3 a.m. It's a bit after 2 now, so I guess I'll get here about 1 o'clock tomorrow morning and, um, and I'll try it then. Anyway, so we'll cut to that shortly. Alright, so I'm back on site. Um, got to cart all my gear into the paddock here and I'll set up, um, there's some trees there. It's a really moonlit night and um, it was a bit the same way last night. It might not uh, be that good for foxing, but... Um, Anyway, we'll try. It is uh, 
think about quarter past one, 20 past one, and we'll go through to probably the birds start chirping. Let's go do that. Big old tomcat, nine meters. All right, it's um quarter past three, and all I've seen so far is a a big tomcat that was heckling the the ducks and chickens and whatnot in their little locked up pen. So he's been up to no good. So I had a shot at him. I'm not sure if I connect it or not, but. Um, my range fire and it was being a bit touchy. It's right close to a fence. It was probably a bit of a big ask. Um, if I haven't explained my setup to you, this is what I'm using. Um, this is a Finder FH35R. So it's a 640 sensor thermal with 35 millimeter objective lens and a built-in range finder that normally works very good. I have that going down to this little tablet here. So as you can see when I rotate that, I can actually see what's around me. There's virtually no lag, it's just connected by Wi-Fi, it's really good. Um, and you can turn on the rangefinder and microphone now and there and record with it. <coughs> um, in here, or well, actually on the firearm tonight, I'm using a Howard 1100 with subsonic standards. And I've got two of these, one's on the firearm. So this is a one leaf AI night vision add-on. They're really good, I like them. Um, I've got two of them in the 16mm lens, and I use them a lot. Um, I use it on my PCP air rifle. I use it on my 22, obviously like tonight. 22 Magnum and 223. I do have a little bit of trouble with it on the 308. Um, my 308 weighs a bit under four kilos scoped, um, and the eye relief is quite short. You've actually got to have your eye touching this, and um, you can make the screen inside smaller so you can get your eye back about uh, half an inch, an inch away. But um, it's still a bit touch and go and it's only a matter of time before I whack my eye with this on the 308. So tonight, I actually ordered this uh, last week. It just come today and I've been testing it out. This is a laser torch. So it's an LEP. This one's actually made by Trustfire, believe it or not. Um, they're about 139 US, so about 200 Australian. We sort of got it from direct from this door. It's got two buttons. That one turns it on. And the little side button just goes through low, medium, high. Um, so they're not LED. How it actually works is, you probably won't be able to see it in here, but it's LEP stands for Laser Excited Phosphor. So it shoots a blue laser into a piece of phosphor that's suspended. Um, and then goes through some anti-refraction lenses, um, convex lens and anti-reflection coatings. And it gives you a super, super tight spot. I mean, fantastically tight. Um, at 100 metres, the spot's only probably about six foot across, if that. So I'm thinking, when I got this, that I would try it on my 308. Um, call me a bit old school, but... When I go spotlighting, you know, old school spotlights, they were just a real tight spot and you'd put it on the animal so you'd light up the ground in front of him and he'd be in the spot. And if you look to his left and right, he couldn't see because it was completely dark. All the new hunting torches, like I've got a fair few too, if you've watched this channel, you'd know. Um, if they're under 200 metres, there's enough spill that you can still see where they're going. So I find um, quite often I can't make them stop like I used to be able to with a traditional spotlight. Anyway, I'm hoping this thing will do it because... Um, yeah, that tiny little spot. It's crazy because it's only 460 lumens, but it's over 300,000 candela because it's condensed so much. So I'm really looking forward to trying this on the 308. Um, I think it should be just a trick. Put it on one of those little Picatinny mounts that's got windage and elevation adjustment so I can make it perfectly with my crosshairs. Um, I'll take some photos of this and show it to you in the day because I haven't done a review or anything on it, but um, as I said, it's new to me, this... Um, LEP technology, but it's um, Trustfire T30R. It runs on a single 18650 battery, uh, 460 lumens, 1100 meters of throw, 300 and something thousand candela. Um, waterproof, it's got a one inch neck up there. Did come with a, a little clip, it's uh, USB C rechargeable. 
and I think it's IPX8 waterproof. So this is something totally different and I don't know if I showed you or not before but I'll put this thing on you can sort of see what I'm talking about the spot. It is insane. It's a big tree there just about 50 meters away and then out there for 180. But as you can see that is crazy bright and so tight to beam. It's almost like a, a lightsaber. No spill whatsoever. I think this is going to be really good for hunting and I'm hoping to test it out a bit more. Here we go, I think I've got a customer. He's off in a hurry. Well, that was a um that was a no show. I went down there and um couldn't find anything. Uh, I walked along a bit further along that track where I thought he might have been heading, but there was nothing there. Um it might have just been an overactive uh, possum, it's possible. But um, my car is parked on that track too, a bit further down, so maybe he um, got the got a bit worried on when he come across the car that's not normally there. They're pretty smart, some of these foxes. They get really, really habitual. Anyway, it's about 20 past four. Um, I just thought I'd film this because every time I see the film, something seems to happen. The only problem is the light on the back of my phone wrecks my night vision. So anyway, I'll get back to it. Some of these possums are big. Some big horses over there. I one of them. No, it's not quite so that was not there. He's facing straight on. Big possums. Well that's it. Another night over. Didn't see any foxes. Um, that one that I seen walking along the fence line uh, that I thought might have been a, a bit of an overactive possum. I, I went back and had a look at that footage, you know, I definitely think it was a fox. It must have got to where I had the car here parked beside this dirt track. And he must have decided to turn around. Anyway, that's it. Looks like I'll have to come back and maybe try some traps. Because I've got the majority of them. And they're not running around everywhere now. Um, got quite a few from out of the area. But, um... Seems to be a couple, maybe a couple more wily, older, smart ones. But I'll, um, I'll come in and set some traps here, I guess, maybe. If I do that, maybe I'll do some video on that stuff. Show you a bit of that. Anyway, on that note, we'll leave the, the video at that. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you really like it and like more of that kind of stuff, then um, hit the uh, subscribe button. And um, quick thing, I did take a shot at a cat. Um, there's no other houses around here that own any cats. It's only just the houses here. And it's a long way from everything else, so um, they're just uh, feral cats if they're out here. And um, if you're not sure about how that works in Australia, check them out. You'll see that they, um, they've made a lot of stuff go extinct. They're, they're really bad in our country. Anyway, so catch you next time. Bye.